In this video, we're going to go over the use of the three basic programming constructs, that's selection, sequence and iteration. In order to explain these programming constructs, we're going to use the example of a simple program for a game called Beat That Dice, which we went over in the previous video. So the first of the three programming constructs and the most simple and straightforward is sequence. And sequence literally means executing one instruction after another. And by default, if your program isn't doing selection or iteration or anything else special, it is always working in sequence. That's simply executing one line and then moving on and executing the next line and then the next and so on. If programs could only operate using sequence though, they wouldn't be very intelligent. Branching is a construct that allows the program to end up going in a number of various directions, depending on the outcome of a condition. So the first typical selection construct you learn about is typically the if statement. So here we can see if dice one is greater than dice two, then we execute the first line of code. Otherwise, or we say else, execute this line of code. And this is quite typical and something by now you'll probably be quite used to. So here we can see at the bottom, if user input equals roll value, print, you worked it out correctly. Otherwise, print, no, the value of the roll is something else. So this is really common and is the first typical selection or branching statement you learn. The final programming construct is iteration, often known as looping. And this is where we get to repeat sections of code. There are several ways of doing this. A popular one is the for loop and a for loop is known as a counter controlled loop. And we use this when the number of iterations needed is known ahead of the iteration executing. So for example, here we're saying for roles in range, roles per player. And if roles per player was nine, it would be for roles in range nine. So we know the number of times we want to execute or iterate, repeat this code. Another form of iteration or looping you may be aware of is the while loop. Now these are known as condition controlled loops and they're used when the number of iterations is not known because the variable used to determine when the iteration ends is changing often within the iteration itself. So here we see while answer is not equal to computer, run this line of code, answer equals input, what is the password? We don't know how many times that line of code needs to be executed. And every time round the while loop, it will say, while answer is not equal to computer. And as long as it's false, as long as it's not equal to computer, it will carry on running that loop again and again. Could be once, could be 10 times, could be 100 times. It's only when that Boolean expression evaluates to true, so while answer is not equal to computer, it's only when that is, is true, that statement, that the while loop will end. Now, importantly, you can also have do until loops. And this is another situation where you have to be careful if you've been using Python, because Python doesn't actually support do until, until loops. But again, you need to be aware of them for your exam and you could be asked questions on them. It's still a while loop in that it's a condition controlled loop. But with a do unto loop, the code will execute at least once. So just carefully look at the difference. The top one says, while answer is not equal to computer. Well, if the very first time you hit that line, it's not equal to computer, then you'll never run the code inside the while loop. So when the statement is checked at the top, the code has the possibility of never being run. With a do unto loop, you can see we check the exit condition at the end. So with a do until loop, you can guarantee the code inside the loop will execute 
at least once. And that's an important difference. And there's several areas in computing where you may want the code to always execute at least once, but possibly not again. One other thing you need to be comfortable with at GCSE is the concept of nested structures. And this is the idea of putting one statement inside another. And we can achieve this with both iteration selection and indeed a mixture of both. So if we look at the example on the left here, we can see we have an iterative for loop nested inside an iterative while loop. And this is perfectly fine. So it's saying while not solved, run a number of instructions and then enter a for loop, which will run some instructions one to five times. That inner for loop happens one to five times, exits, but then we're still inside the outer while loop. In a similar way, you can have selection statements nested inside each other. On the right here, we see if the game is won, then run some code. We then hit an inner nested selection statement. If score is greater than high score, then run some additional code. We then exit to the outer selection statement. There's also nothing stopping you nesting selection and iterative statements within each other and indeed to multiple levels. But a simple two level nested structure is all you need to be aware of for the GCSE.